Well, the day is finally here. We can no longer create or edit expanded text ads. And not just looking at the entire text ad itself, but also certain components of our text ads are also impacted now that it's July of 2022. And one of those components is going to be your ad customizers. If you are still using ad customizers in any evergreen expanded text ads that you have running, there's going to be some big changes coming by the end of the year. And that's the first thing that we're going to cover in this video. And then the remaining time, which is going to be most of it, is going to show you how we can still use ad customizers for responsive search ads. Before we hop into Google Ads and show you how we can set up ad customizers for responsive search ads, I want to talk about how ad customizers are going to change for your expanded text ads in 2022. There's only a couple points. The last one is going to be the most important, but I think it's something we should all be aware of. The first point is pretty self-explanatory. As of right now, we can no longer create or edit ad customizers for expanded text ads. And this makes complete sense because we also cannot edit or create new expanded text ads. And if you are using ad customizers, they're already part of your headlines and descriptions. So if you can't edit your expanded text ads, of course, you won't be able to edit your ad customizers. Kind of go hand in hand. This next point is coming directly from Google. I'm not using any business data feeds right now, so I can't confirm, but they are saying that you can no longer upload or edit business data feeds for expanded text ads. And now onto the last point, which is going to be the most important one of this slide. I had to increase the font a little bit to stress that importance. But if you have an expanded text ad that is using an ad customizer, those ad customizers are only going to continue to serve until the end of this year, 2022. So even though your expanded text ads could potentially run further into 2023, your ad customizers in your expanded text ads are going to stop running at the end of this year. So this is pretty much saying that any of your expanded text ads using ad customizers are pretty much going to be broken or potentially worthless by the time 2023 starts. I love ad customizers and right now I'm releasing this video in July. So I'm thinking about all the expanded text ads that I have in my clients accounts using ad customizers. I'm pretty much going to have to pause them all by the end of the year, even if they're still working really well. Because my guess is there's going to be some weird looking broken headlines or descriptions if I'm still using these in 2023. So now that you know that ad customizers will no longer work in your expanded text ads by the beginning of 2023, this is a perfect time to start testing out the ad customizer experience in some new responsive search ads. So let's jump into Google ads and I'll show you how you can do that. Since your ad customizers are part of your responsive search ads, you either need to edit a current responsive search ads or like I'm going to do, create a new one. Now ignore the ad group name, final URL. I'm just going to play around in here. These aren't going to be real ads. But to begin creating an ad customizer, go into any one of your headlines or descriptions. And I'm not looking for actual ideas there, so ignore the drop down. It's just going to happen. But then enter an opening curly brace. Once we did that, we got a different type of drop down. Now, if you're pretty familiar with ad customizers and you use a lot of them with your expanded text ads, you may notice that something is missing. And that is the if function ad customizer. It is missing because as of right now, if functions are not supported with responsive search ads. I did make a video about if functions. If you're curious about what they were, you can watch it right here. But you're not going to be able to add them to any of your current expanded text ads. It's weird. I think this is the first time I'm pretty much almost giving a history lesson about something in Google ads. So then let's talk about the four options we do get for responsive search ads. And the first one is going to be keyword insertion. If I move my mouse out of the way, keyword insertion is one way to try to make your ads more relevant to the search terms that users have typed into Google that have triggered the keywords that you are targeting. So we see how the headline has started off with keyword in the curly braces. There's the colon afterwards. That part is important. But then you can also see within the syntax right here. There is the keyword, colon, and then your default text, which we can enter in right here. So right now, I just added in some default text of coffee maker. I'm going to hit apply so we can see the full thing within our headline. And then I'm going to pause this ad preview right up here so we can see what happens within the headline. In most cases, Google is going to try to use one of your keywords as the headline. If for whatever reason, Google cannot use one of your keywords, let's just say it's really long tail and it wouldn't fit the 30 characters, then Google is going to default to whatever you've put into your default text. We're just using our dummy account to create these videos. I'm pretty sure there's not even any keywords within the ad group I'm using. So in the preview, it's only going to show the default text. I removed the closing curly brace because I wanted to show you some options here. The default choice when I was creating this was sentence case. So really when this is going to be shown, the M in maker will be lowercase. 
only your first word is going to be capitalized. Title case, we'll leave it as we see it right there. Every word is capitalized. And then we have all lowercase, where the C and M in coffee maker would be lowered. I'll leave it as is. I hit apply. It added the closing curly brace for me again. Now, Google does state that if you use keyword insertion, it still needs to follow the policies that they have in place. And one of those policies is that you should not be showing protected trademarks within your ad copy. I know there's a lot of people out there that use keyword insertion for their competitor campaigns and they get away with it. But I'm telling you right now, we do not recommend it because you still can get flagged and reported for that. So let me delete this and then we'll go with one of the other ad customizers. And that is a countdown. I have loved using these for any client that has a limited sale, trying to build urgency for a potential price increase, trying to promote a particular event, that sort of thing. By default, the syntax is gonna start with this general countdown. So if we're saying this particular sale ends in two hours, that number two within two hours is going to be adjusted to whatever time zone is of the person seeing the ad. That's because we have this time zone setting selected right here. What you could do is edit the syntax to be a global countdown. And as you're filling in the other information, the global countdown will stay the same and show the same message no matter where the user is anywhere in the world. So if you're saying it ends in five hours, whether that person is in Alaska or someone else is in Florida, they're both going to see the ends in five hours message. Doesn't matter what their time zone is. I'm going to go back to the original general countdown one because I think that's going to be the most used. Okay, so then first you get to choose when the countdown ends. You can also add a specific time to it and then choose when you want the countdown to start. When I'm recording this, I'm more than five days before the 5th of July. So let me increase that to 10 and then I will hit apply. Well, right now that's pretty boring. We need something else to go along with this. So let me type in some additional text to the headline. And then I just paused on a preview that actually showed one of the options. Since I'm five days out from July 5th when I'm recording this video, it would show that the sale ends in five days. If I would have waited an extra day to record this video, that headline would say sale ends in four days. Now, as it gets closer and closer to it, that time can adjust. So if you're within less than a day from when the sale ends, your headline could then say sale ends in 12 hours and four minutes, something that specific. So if you do like to build that urgency with a sale or promo, use a countdown customizer, and then you won't have to keep refreshing and updating your headlines or your descriptions. Besides responsive search ads, you can also use the countdown feature in dynamic search ads. If you're concerned about that headline being in your responsive search ad after the date ends, you don't have to worry. That particular headline will stop serving. So then you can go in and edit that responsive search ad if you want to replace it with something else. You also have to be aware of character limits. So I did mention certain countdown customizers could say both the hours and minutes. That longer character count could affect that particular headline showing. If the time that's mentioned in the ad customizer pushes the overall headline past the 30 characters, that headline will not show. So keep these a little bit shorter to give you a better chance of getting more impressions for that particular headline. I believe I talk a little bit more about the countdown customizer in this video right here, so feel free to check it out. But now let's move on to another customizer, and that is going to be location insertion. And this customizer is going to be ideal if you have store locations or you're trying to reach users in a specific location because you can customize the experience based upon where that user is when they're seeing your ad. And these are determined by the geographic locations that you have set up at the campaign level. It's a lot easier to do it this way than uploading a data feed file of a variety of different cities or states or countries. So we had a client that had a regional chain all within one state. We could still target the entire state within the campaign, but then we would call out the nearest city to that user just to show them that there was a location near them. So that's why the city format was a better option. We also worked with a client that wanted to find people who would want to open a franchise and they could do it in several different states. So we could change the location format to the state level and have a message like open a franchise in enter the state name. Just like keyword insertion, there's a field for default text. The default text will show whenever the location information cannot be used. It is optional, but it's recommended to put something in. So here, let me add some default text. I'm going to change the location format and then finish out the rest of my headline. And then let me find a preview that actually shows it. So in the preview, we see a good example right there. Open a store in, and then it's pulling in the city name. But if I look at the syntax, for whatever reason, if the city that the user's in is really long, has a lot of characters, it will replace it with your area. So then the headline will still make sense. 
Again, it's going to pull locations depending on what you have your location targeting set at the campaign level. And yes, I do have a video fully dedicated to location insertion that shows you several examples of how you could use it. So you can watch that video here. And the last one is going to be the ad customizer. And this is where the business data feed stuff comes in. Remember, we can't really do that anymore. That was for expanded text ads. So for a responsive search ad, you need to create ad attributes. And to do that, you would want to go up to your tools and settings and still go under business data. Here we see the data feed section. There's a good chance any of your ETA data feeds are living in this location. We'll now need to go to add customizer attributes. So then here is where your attributes live. When you add it, you can upload it. You can add attributes one by one. I do have another video going over the ad customizer attributes. You can watch that one here. It'll go a little bit more into the setup, but you can see I have a few options already set up here. Once you have that set up, you can go and select the specific attribute that you have set up within the tools and settings and call out that specific attribute. I'll add in some default text, click apply, and then I want to finish the ad customizer. Hopefully that stays paused. So the attribute I selected, poorly labeled, I'm sorry, the attribute was just called name. You could tell I was a little lazy when I was creating the previous video, but it was calling out a specific product category. And then you could pull in specific components to customize the ad experience. So think of a scenario where in this case, electronics are on sale, but maybe in the store, different product categories are on sale at different times. So then you can just update your attributes without having to update your headlines all the time. Another example, if I see if I can pull it up here, I had a percent. So in other cases, maybe you're thinking of certain products are on sale and the percentage that they're on sale can change. So if you're using this particular ad customizer in a lot of ads throughout the account, you can just go in and change the attribute, the percentage off of that particular product. Then it'll change the percentage automatically for any of the headlines or descriptions that are using this particular attribute. Let me just show you one more example, updating the default text, going to click apply. The attribute I set up was a particular number. There's only 39 left. As we're selling more and you want to update that number, you can update the attribute. And for whatever reason, if the 39 or the actual number doesn't show, instead of 39, it will say only a few left. So really, I need to go in there and remove only, and just say a few, because I already had only as part of the headline. Otherwise, that would have been a funny looking headline. Perfect example of always double checking your work. So now it will say only a few left if the number doesn't show. And I understand that my preview went away. There we go. So that was just a quick overview of the four different types of ad customizers we'll now be able to use in responsive search ads. And if I open up this window again, I'll do another curly brace. These are the four customizer options we get for responsive search ads. For the most part, it's the same setup experience as what you had with an expanded text ad, with the exception of the ad customizer slash business data feed customizer. That one is a new process, and I actually think it's a little bit more of a pain in the butt to set up your attributes instead of just using a feed. Even the bulk upload option in a feed can be a little tricky, and I still make mistakes when uploading it. I think the important part here is that your expanded text ad customizers will stop running by the end of the year. So if you need to run customizers beyond 2022, you're going to have to try to replicate that experience with the responsive search ad. If there are any questions on how ad customizers work for RSAs, please let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week. So if you want to see more from the paid media pros channel, be sure to subscribe.